Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning just lifting this beautiful day to you. Father, we're so thankful just for all the blessings and favor that you pour out here on your church house and this church family. Father, we pray that you come and sit among us, that your presence be felt throughout this building. Father, that the message that comes today, Father, that would it would just be from you, Father, that you just move me behind the cross. And Father, let your, uh, your glory be reflected in everything we say and do. Father, we love you and praise you. Give the glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd open your Bibles with me this morning, first thing, we're going to Psalms 23, verse 1. I know many of you know it. We're just going to read it together. Psalms 23, beginning at verse 1. Read it with me if you would. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside white waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, thy comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen. You know, God God is... is is wanting to be so much part of our lives to help us in our daily walk. Everything we do, everything we go through, the Lord wants to be part of that. And this prayer here is how we, we acknowledge him that, that we understand that we need all this in our lives. You know, he lays me beside, leads me beside still waters. He wants you to find some peace and comfort in your life. You know, along with everything else that goes in your life, and that's really tough to do today. This item right here, I brought for a visual. I always, I like visuals. I don't know if y'all do or not, but I like visuals. This is called a balance board. And this little board right here is used in fishing, of course. Is you hang a fish on each side to see which one weighs the most. Now, we have scales that we weigh fish by. But we also have this board just in case those scales might be off a little bit. Because one or two ounces can make a difference. So, with a visual like that... This board here, you, you absolutely, some of the hard parts of a, a visual with a board, especially when you're using fish, I'm using water bottles today. But when you get a deal similar to this, and, and it, earlier it was level, I don't know what happened. One of, them, <laughs> one of them lost water or something anyway. You know, it's supposed to be balanced. Balance showing you that it's equal on each side, right? So it's kind of that way when we, when we look at life. Is our life really balanced or does our life look like this? Because many people's lives looks like, uh-oh, there it goes, looks like this. Totally out of balance, right? Is your life out of balance this morning? Because my point this morning is, is to determine what your life looks like. A balanced life is very, very important to all of us because when your life gets out of balance, you get out of control, you have problems, life gets difficult, and it just gets harder and harder on us to do anything. And tonight, tonight I, that, today, I, that's why I wanted to use the visual to show you what people's lives look like from time to time. They're not always that way. I don't think everybody's always out of balance every and every, each and every day. But there are some that are, I assure you. But I hope that that's not you and it's not that way. So an unbalanced life is never good for anyone. In today's society, many people have unbalanced lives. It, it, and, and they don't even realize that they have an unbalanced life. They don't realize it at all. And, it's the, and what they really don't realize is how that unbalanced life is affecting their way of life each and every day. Everyone they come in touch with, everywhere they go, everything they do. If you have an unbalanced life, then you're going to have issues in those areas. And they're going to bring issues to you. And an unbalance, it, it causes unseen problems. It causes problems that we don't even see going on sometimes. But an unbalanced life can be corrected. It's that you don't have to be that way. It can be corrected. You just have to focus on it a little bit more. A little over a decade ago, from 1914 to 1926, 136 wolves in the Yellowstone National Park were eliminated. This was before anyone really understood the correctness of wildlife and how to manage it. 
It was before there was an understanding about the value and the intact ecosystem that's in the Yellowstone National Park. It was discovered that wiping out an apex predator, top predator in the park, turned out to be a major mistake, which through the ecosystem of the park, it threw everything off balance in, in Yellowstone National Park. Seventy years without wolves changed Yellowstone. Many songbirds left. Think, well, man, wolves, no wolves there? Why would songbirds leave? The elk, the coyotes became overpopulated, and many beavers disappeared because of this. One thing touched another. The elk overgrazed the land and the trees, such as the willows and the aspens, that the birds liked. So they overgrazed them and kept them from growing. Without these trees, the songbirds, they didn't want to, they, they began to de decline in the park. Beavers could no longer build their dams and streams, became eroded and degraded the conditions that willow trees need to grow. So once again, one thing attached to another. And without the beavers' dams, the shade from the trees and the plants, the water temperatures were too high for some of the cold water fish to live in. In 1973, the Endangered Species Act was passed, and the gray wolf was one of the first species listed as endangered, which in turn allowed mandating protection and a recovery plan right at that moment. The long path to recovery in the United States for the wolf had begun that day. On January 12, 1995, wolves were reintroduced into Yellowstone National Park for the recovery to begin. And the recovery was very slow. It took many, many years, 25 years or more to destroy it. And it took many, many years for it to come back. And it took decades. It took more decades, not for the recovery, but for Americans to get on board with the program. Because a lot of ranchers, I understand, they don't want those wolves killing their cattle and all that kind of stuff. But many people that... that they, they weren't going to get on board. They, they didn't think that the wolves needed to be in that park. What changed their minds was that many of the Americans was the information and the research that revealing what the impact was doing to Yellowstone. Rather, you can tell people anything you want to, but if you have facts and you have research and you have proof, that gets everybody a little bit more on board. So they, were, they had revealed to everybody what that impact was because of the elimination of the wolves in Yellowstone National Park. And since the reintroduction of the wolves, a change began in the park within a year. It rebalanced the elk and deer populations, allowing willows and aspens to return to the landscape and start to grow again. The end of overgrazing stabilized the riverbanks, and the rivers recovered and flowed in new directions. Songbirds returned, along with the increase in beavers, eagles, foxes, and badgers. I know probably right here with me speaking to you, you're thinking, well, Brother Reggie, I didn't come here this morning to hear a documentary on Yellowstone and its wolves. That's not what I'm here for. And I understand we shouldn't be here for that. And that should be true. But since this story, I pray, got your attention, we can talk about how this parallels with our unbalanced lives that we have. You know, it's sometimes hard to find a balance in our lives. We have a balance, we have to balance our time at work versus time at home. Our time of entertainment and rest with the time for family and friends. Most important of all, we got to find time to balance our regular daily lives and activities with time we allow for God. There are people that have no problem balancing their lives. My wife's not. I'm not. But it's hard to maintain balance even for the most you know, dedicated and, and restrictive person that knows how to do that. It's hard for them to keep that balance because of so many things that pop up in our lives. So keeping it in balance is, is another problem. The question would be this morning, is your life Spiritual life balance. I can't answer that for you. Only you can answer that. Is your spiritual life balanced with everything else that you do in your life week to week? Do you have a balanced relationship with God? 
Now, I'm not saying, do you, are you balanced with God? I'm saying, do you have a balanced relationship? Big difference. You know, we can say, hey, I go to church. I know God, the whole deal, and all that. But if you don't have a relationship, then you're out of balance. And many people, especially Christians, a lack of balance is a problem. Our balance with God, it easily shifts. It's it easily to shift away from God to something else. We may have unknowingly, unknowingly picked up some bad habits. And by going one way or other, we've gotten out of balance with God. Sin. We might have some little bad habits in our life. We might have a little sin that's dragging us somewhere, but all at once we're getting out of balance with God. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. We're reading it in the NIV. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. The Lord detests dishonest, sca dishonest scales, but accurate weights find favor with him. Now, I believe the English Standard Version is a little bit clearer, which we can understand maybe a little bit better. It says, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So he's telling us right here that we need to be in balance with God, right? We need to make sure our lives are balanced between work, family, friends, the church, with God first, right? We must have a purpose, a plan, a schedule to maintain a balance in life. Some of us probably fit some of that, and some of us, <laughs> I don't know if I got a schedule. I usually have a plan and a purpose, but that schedule thing doesn't work very good for me. But you've got to have that if you're going to get in balance. And that, that balance, you've got to have all that, which includes our trusting relationship with God. We need a trusting relationship with Him. Having a balance in life is a battle. It is a daily, everyday battle because we know Satan wants to get in the midst of it. And he wants to throw you off balance. I always talked about straddling the fence. We're balancing on the fence, but God's on one side, Satan's on the other. And he's ready to knock you off, and whichever way you're leaning the most is the way you're going to fall. So we have to be in balance. And while some do not have organized balanced life, some people think they do. Some people think they have this perfect, organized, balanced life. And I've had people tell me that, hey, I'm good and all that. But they never have complete control. I can testify to that. We think we do. We think we're in control. We think we got it all going on. And then all at once, something happens and we find out we're not in control anymore. In a balanced life is a life of priorities. Priorities that we... We need to realize what our priorities are in our have you ever sat down and just wrote out the priorities in your life in the, in the way that they should be? If you do, you'll be shocked. I found out fishing's not the top one, you know? But if you ever do that, you kind of get an idea of what direction your life's going and what's going on in your life. Many Christians believe that their priorities should look like this. God, family, ministry, career, friends, and self. Those could shift any, any place right there. But that's how many believe it, especially as Christians, the way it should look. But I don't feel like this is the way that God meant for us to set our priorities in our lives. I don't believe that at all. I, I think that when we start looking at it that way, that there's a big separation there. You know, actually, we're throwing God in the mix to everybody else and everything else where we know God is separate. Amen. What God would expect from us starts and it ends and it's totally encompassed on him, strictly on him. So we can't run it all together and think that's going to work, try to put it all in one pot and stir it up and just see what comes out each day. We've got to start with God, amen? And that's the very best way to do it. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33.
Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek first him. Everything else falls in place, right? If we're seeking God in everything we do, then everything else should fall in place. If it doesn't, then we've got God right there to call on. Hey, we're going to need a little bit of direction, need a little bit of help here. Rather be sure that our priorities include the things that God has given us and expects of us. Two things there. Remember, not only what he's given us, but what does he expect of us? Have you ever given that any thought, saying, hey, I know what the Ten Commandments are. I know what the Bible says. But what does God really expect of me? He's in control of our lives. I think it'd be pretty important that we would know what he expected of us. Have a plan, a purpose. Do you have a purpose and plan in your life? Or are you just going through life? Because you need that. Because we've got to focus on something. We've got to be in a direction that will keep us locked in with God. You know, our lives are important and the things, all our materials and the things we do in our lives, they're important. But are we putting everything else ahead of God? We've got to be focused and make sure we're balanced with God, but he comes first. And God has plans for each of us and specific work that he's called us to do. Do you know what your calling is? Do you know what you're being called to do? Some of us do. Some people know exactly what God's calling them to do, and they're going, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Keep that up. That ought to work out real well for you. It's good news that he has all that for us. But often we can feel overwhelmed when we're struggling to manage and balance everything we think we need to do. So if we get overwhelmed in our regular life, then God can come second, third, fourth, fifth, down the line. Because we're so overwhelmed, we got to mess with all this. We don't want to mess with what God's got going on for us right then. But if God comes first, that balance equals out, and it gets better in our lives each time. This morning, I'd like to share five areas of our lives that we need to, we need to balance to help us live according to God's purpose and God's plan. And God's plan and purpose will balance our lives if we follow his plan and his purpose for our lives. The first one is our top priority should be spending time with God each day. And that means reading his word and praying. Take time each day. I don't know. It, I, you know, I, I told Terry this morning on the way over here, we're listening to the radio. And Don Williams, I hope this day is good. Lord, I hope this day is good. I think everybody ought to start with that song. Because isn't that what we hope for every day when we get up? Man, I hope this is a good day. Well, how about Lord? I hope this day is good. You can do it. You can make it happen. So I think the priorities is, is reading God's word, being in prayer, getting your day started off right. Even if you just read one little paragraph, at least you're trying, right? Find you something that you get in God's word each and every day. If you don't know where else to go, go to Proverbs. Learn Proverbs. Proverbs builds character. So you can start there. Just read a little bit of Proverbs each day. But at least you're doing something to grow closer to God and get your life in balance. Number two, we should allocate time for family and friends. God doesn't say ignore your family and friends. Don't do that. Don't make it all about work, right? Don't make it all about stress in your life and everything else. But you need to have family and friends. Now, you may have some friends and family you don't want, you don't want, you want to have association with all the time. But you need to have family and friends in your lives. It doesn't need to be all about work and priorities and career and everything else. The priorities, once again, if you start with God, everything else falls into place. Number three, the area most likely to become unbalanced in our lives is work. Is work. And the Lord, the Bible tells us he disproves of laziness. He doesn't want us to be lazy. He's not telling us quit our jobs. Don't, don't go there. Don't say, hey, Brother Reggie said this morning, I got to come in and quit. Don't do that. But he doesn't want us to get overly consumed with our careers and our jobs because we can. Some people, they just love to work, and that's okay. They want to work all the time. But you still have to have a balance. 
You need to find time for God. You need to find time for family. You need to find time for friends. Because if you work all the time, you're going to be a miserable person sooner or later. There's no doubt about that. Now, some people really enjoy that, and that's okay. I guess for them, not for me. Because I don't think I could do that. We worked this week, didn't we? We found out we got muscles we didn't have. Oh, I found out I got muscles I didn't have. Yeah. Yeah, I paid for that one. Terry's in shape. I'm not. I guess that's the deal. You know, number four is taking care of our body is important. So we should allocate time for rest, recreation, and exercise. Some are going, wait a minute. I got that rest and, re- rest and relaxation down, but that exercise don't appeal to me very well. Well, you know, this last week I tried. I went to the Senior Citizen Center. I went and bought me some workout stuff. I said, I'm tired of the, I ain't buying new jeans, right? I got enough jeans. I ain't going to go buy new ones just because I can't fit in these, right? So it's time to work out, right? So I go to the Senior Citizen Center, and I'm going to work out. And I did some things. I was there about an hour. I did some things. But the next day, I'm ready to go, and they close. You know, I've got all this motivation. I'm going to go do this, and the ice closed them down. Then Wednesday, the ice closed them down. And then by Thursday, I really don't care. (laughs) Am I not like all of you or some of you that way? Right? There you go. Let me see. (laughs) But I really want to do that, and I found out working this weekend that going up and down hills and doing things yeah i need to go to the gym a lot more because i'm not not right there so we do need to take care of our bodies we need rest and relaxation everyone needs r and r everybody needs time away you need your quiet time your time to rest and focus uh, i'm most of that time when you start reflect on god first give him part of that rest and time be still the Lord says, be still and know that I am God and see what he's got for you in the life. And number five, the last one, the Bible urges us to meet together regularly with one another for worship. And we do that. Many of you here this morning, you know how important that is. The further you get away from meeting together, being in worship, going to church, the easier it gets not to do that. You want to get your life out of balance, ignore God. Don't show up for God, and that'll do it in a hurry. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. Kind of all the way back toward the back of your Bible. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving us meeting together, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. But encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Encouraging one another. I like that, spurring each other on, right? To get our lives balanced, we need that. We need that friendship. We need those Christian friends. And we need the Lord in the middle of it. Not only should we have the Lord spurring us on and encouraging us with his word as it does, but also we need each other. We need fellowship. And I think that gives us the the time to be able to share our burdens and hear from one another, encourage one another. You know, sometimes you might have a burden going on in your life or you might have a problem going on in your life and, and you're really not looking for somebody to fix it. You're just looking for somebody to share it with, right? That might be in prayer for you on that. That might pray with you on that. So it's not all about, about not sharing your burdens. I think we need to. But I think we have to get rid of a lot of those burdens to get balanced again. Give them to the Lord. Lay them at the foot of the cross. These areas we talked about all need space in our lives. We need space and time for each one of these areas in our lives. And I know each day is different. Every day is different. When we get up, something different is going on. Some of you may have the same thing going on every day. That could get you unbalanced in a hurry, but every day is different. But if we start each day seeking God's guidance instead of our own, we'll find that the balance in our lives will change just like 
the change that was done in Yellowstone Park. The change in our lives can start. It may be slow. It may just be a slow process, but at least you're making the steps to do the right thing in the right direction to get balance back in your life. We're going to close right here. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 11. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 11. Honest scales and balances belong to the Lord. All the weights in the bag are of his making. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you once again, Father. Thankful, Father, just for all, all that you do for us. Your love, your grace, and your mercy that you show upon us. And Father, how you struggle with each and every one of us to, to help us stay balanced. That struggle sometimes is because we don't listen. But, Father, be with us today. Let us have our minds open, our hearts open, and our ears open, Father, that we can continue to hear from you through your word that we might learn that how important that balance is in our lives. And, Father, how we can structure our lives where they are more fruitful, more exciting, more resting, and more fun in our lives, Father. We pray that, pray, Father, that you would just guide us in that, Father, and be with us in each and everything we do when it comes to that. Father, let us focus each morning to be strictly on you. Let us start each morning with you in mind, seeking your guidance in our lives and your safety for us all. Father, I pray you be with each and every one as they leave here today. I pray for that hedge of protection around each and every one. Father, we're thankful for your presence throughout this building. Father, we love you. We praise you. We give all the glory to you. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen.